We're now going to talk about the trends across a period, across a period in the period, periodic table as you go from left to right, all right? And the first thing we want to talk about uh, in general trends as we go from left to right in a single period is the atomic size and not the ionic size. So don't get those th two things confused. We're only concerned about the atomic size. Now the atomic size uh, across a period as you go from left to right would decrease. And the reason being is all, it all boils down to the uh, number of electrons in the valence shell. So let's take a look at, let's say, um, sodium, all right? And here is the nucleus of the sodium, and sodium is in period three. So it has three energy levels, or principal energy levels, or valence or, or, or shells. And in the valence shell, it has one lone pair of electron, one lone electron. And so, it's over there, and so be it. And if we take, compare sodium with, let's say, um, aluminum, okay, aluminum, and aluminum also has uh, the nucleus, but it has, the nucleus has two extra protons, okay? The nucleus has two extra protons, and it also has three energy levels, but this time the number of valence uh, electrons has also increased by two electrons. So what this means is that when you compare sodium with aluminum, what you will see is that because of the addition of two extra protons and two extra electrons, whoops, should be two extra electrons, there will be a, there will be a stronger force of attraction between the additional protons and additional electrons. So if there's a force, stronger force of attraction, then that means the radius of the atom of aluminum will be smaller when you compare it with sodium. Now as you go further right of the periodic table to let's say um, chlorine, all right, it still has that one nucleus, all right, and that nucleus now you add one, two, three, four, four more electrons than aluminum. You're adding four extra protons and four extra electrons on the valence shell. So it has three, okay, three valence, uh, three electron shells and now it has four protons in the nucleus and four additional electrons on the valence shell. That means there is an even stronger force of attraction pull from the nucleus pulling the electrons towards it. And that will make the atomic radius even smaller. So, um, now, you might ask me, well, Mr. Ko, what about the uh, inside electrons? Aren't they playing a role? Yes, they are. The amount of electrons in the inside shells for sodium, aluminum, and chlorine remain the same. So that means across the same period, the forces that inhibits the attraction between the valence electrons to the nucleus is the same, okay? It's the same. This 
inhibition is called shielding, which we are not going to talk about. All right. All right. So that is the general trend. And also, when you go across the period from left to right, you would see that the elements will lose its metallic character. That means you become, it comes from very metallic, and then it'll start losing its metallic character. By the time it gets around here, it'll be like a semi-metal or a metalloid. That means these elements will behave like a metal at some instances, and like a non-metal in other instances. And then it becomes very non-metallic. And the reason being is also boils down to the bonding nature when these form these elements form bonds. Okay, when you have a metal, uh, in metals they have metallic bonds, and the metallic bonds is caused is because they have delocalized electrons, and that delocalized electrons gives it its metallic properties like good conductor of heat, good conductor of electricity, being ductile, malleable, and all that stuff. But when we go across the period all the way to the other end, to non-metals, these ele uh, elements don't form met metal bonds. They don't form metallic elements. They form diatomic molecules or, or molecules made of uh, four or eight or different types of, of the same kind, right? So they form covalent bonds. These elements now form covalent bonds to become molecules. And these molecules share the bonds. That means the electrons are not delocalized and therefore it does not have those metallic qualities that we know of. Now, it is hard to talk about the period table uh, as you go from left to right across the period without mentioning these elements down here. These elements that at this end, starting from the fourth period here, are known as transition elements. Now, transition elements have very cool properties in that they are hard and strong, Right, they're solid, they have high density, high boiling and boiling point. And the reason being why they are hard and has a high melting and boiling point is simply because when they form those metallic bonds, those metallic bonds do not have one delocalized electron for each positive ion. Instead, it has two or more, usually has two or more uh, delocalized electrons for every one positive ion in that, in that mm, metallic element. All right? That, well, that's why the delocalized electrons, there's more of them swimming, quote and unquote, swimming around the uh, electron C which means there's more uh, forces of attraction between the, those delocalized electrons and the positive ions that are in there. Now note, it should not be positive ions, but that's the convention that's being used in our curriculum. Okay, high density. Now why does transition elements have high density? Well, it's because they're lower down in the group, which means they are packed with more protons and more neutrons. That's why they have higher density, simply because they have more of these heavier subatomic particles. Okay, and very interesting thing about uh, transition elements is that it forms colored compounds like uh, hydrated salts. Uh, copper has this blue color, uh, cobalt has pink, iron, depending on its uh, valency or oxidation states in a green or um, rust color. So it's kind of cool, right? And the reason why it forms colored compounds, again, it has to deal with the 
energy level between the transition elements block as and to uh, another energy level that is quite similar in terms of energy state all right and that's a topic that gets, gets a little too deep for us but we know that transition elements usually and more often than not have more than one type of valency that means it, when it forms compounds it can either have an oxidation state of one two three or more all right so that's what's cool about it that's it for trends across the period.